Hi guys and dolls. So today's tutorial is a uh, Maleficent inspired look using the She Who Dare, or no, this isn't She Who Dare, this is my dark, it says it right here and I still can't say it right. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the My Dark Magic Mineralized Eyeshadow Duo. Um, I actually had a lot of requests to do one for each, uh, for My Dark Magic and for She Who Dare, so she, the so blah, blah, blah. the She Who Dares video will be coming up later this week. It's very s dark and smoky and theatrical and vampy and all that great stuff, so it's perfect for this time of year and any time that you want to bring out your inner evil diva, like Maleficent. And yeah, that's pretty much all I really want to say. Enjoy the tutorial, and if you want to learn how to get this look, just keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to start this off with a primer. I'm going to use the NARS, it's called Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Uh, it dries basically colorless, like even more clear than like um, like Urban Decay Primer Potion, for instance. This is a little bit more colorless, if that makes sense. Uh, this one's a really good option if you don't want to add any color to your lid with your primer, or if you have dark skin or something. So I'm actually going to start with the highlight today. I'm going to use the ELF Eyeshadow Transformer Palette. I'm going to use the one that has kind of like an orange shimmer to it. A lot of you have like some questions about this palette. Like, it's an eyeshadow transformer. Like, what does it do? Is it going to make my eyeshadow like Optimus Prime? It's actually quite simple. There are just literally light colored pastel shades that have highlights of um, various different colors. There's a green highlight, there's an orange highlight, there's a pink, and like a purpley blue. So that's all they are. You can put them over other shadows to make them shimmery. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the orange one on a larger shader brush. And I'm going to put that right under the arch of my brow and then kind of blend that out from there. And I'm just going to take a little bit more of that right there. And then I'm going to blend it down onto the lid a little bit. I'm not grabbing extra color. I just kind of want to uh, spread the love of that, if you will. And uh, it's just going to make... Uh, you know, I lied. I'm going to grab a little bit more. It's just going to make everything blend better. I'm just going to take this Wet n Wild palette. This is the the green palette. And I'm going to use the lighter shade right here. And I'm using that same flat shader brush that I used to apply the shimmery highlight shade. And I'm just going to put this over that. It's not going to completely cancel out the shimmer, but it's going to make it just a tiny bit less frosty because we're going to be using shimmer other places on the lid, it's nice to kind of blend different textures to give your eye a little bit more interest. Alright, so I'm actually going to keep kicking it with the uh, Greed palette. I'm going to grab this shade right here. It's kind of like um, browny, orangey, melony, whatever you want to call the color. I'm grabbing some of that on a big fluffy eyeshadow brush. And then I'm going to um, use this as like a transition color. So it's going to be going between where we have the highlight and where I'm going to have my crease color. So just right there. And just softly blend that to where there's no harsh edge. And then what you can do is take your brush and then wipe off all the color that's on it. And then just really go to town blending that. The, the key to seamless and just in general good looking makeup is blending. And I know that sometimes you can go for that kind of cut crease sharp look. But since that's not the look I'm going for today, I really just want to take a lot of time to blend. And basically you want to see just a seamless transition between one color and the next. Alright, so now I'm going to go in with like a really small crease brush. I've never talked about this one before. I got it at Target for like $1.99. And I'm going to use Sketch from MAC. It's a really pretty kind of a reddish dark brown color. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that on my brush and then tap off the extra. And I'm just going to get it right there in the socket. So if that's a good way to help you find your crease, I always say rock it in your socket. Because what you're doing is you're kind of using a back and forth rocking motion in your socket area. If you get some on the lid, it, that's no biggie because we're going to be going over that with my dark magic. So you just want to get it right there in the socket line. And then kind of blend it up a bit. If you want to, you can take your other blender brush 
to do some of the blending for you. Since it doesn't really have much product on it anymore, it's just going to blend the color out without adding product. Alright, so that's kind of blended enough for me for now. We're going to end up putting other stuff over it, so. Okay, now I'm going to apply the, my, ooh, I'm going to poke myself in the eyes, what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply the My, my Dark Magic uh, to my lid now, now, and you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to apply it wet. If you don't want to apply your eyeshadow wet, and um, the reason why you might not want to do that is because maybe you've had bad experiences with it, or you just don't want to wet your actual eyeshadow. Two things, um, these mineralized eyeshadows tend to be some of the best pressed shadows to use wet because you'll still be able to use it dry. Uh, just as a, an example, this little area here I used wet the other day and I'm still able to pick it up quite nicely with a brush. Uh, whereas a lot of eyeshadows, if you use them wet, they, you won't be able to use them with a brush as easily, like a hard crust will form. So I will say that if you want to use an eyeshadow wet, uh, these mineralized ones are a good, uh, good one to do that with. But if for whatever reason you don't want to use them wet, you could use a kind of mixing medium or like a sticky base on the eyelid first and it'll help it stick. One that I personally recommend is the LA Splash Splash Proof Sealer Eyeshadow Sealer and Base. This one's also really good for getting glitter to stick to the eye. Uh, for whatever reason, I just prefer this wet, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, as a mixing medium for most applications, I like to use Fix Plus. If I want it to um, be in the crease, I usually actually use the Ben Nye Liquid Set. So, yeah, I don't know, I just, it's what works for me. I find that the liquid set makes things wear like iron, but it also makes it really difficult to blend them, and since I want to blend this out later, I'm going to use Fix Plus. That was a really long explanation, but hopefully that will help some of you who have questions about this. So I just wet my brush with the, uh, by spraying on some Fix Plus, and then if I have a little extra, like too much liquid, I blot it off on a clean towel. And I'm going to take this into the pink part of my Dark Magic first, and then pat that on the lid. Grab more, obviously, as you need to. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been picking up more. And then right at the lash line, kind of go up. It's a great way to get any kind of shadow really close to your lash line so you don't have gaps. And then take the, the brush that you use for the crease and just blend out the edge of that really quick. And if you need to grab dry shadow, go ahead and do that. Alright, and then blend. I'm going to wipe off my brush so I don't have too much of the pink side left. Spray it with Fix Plus again. Blot it again grab the purple side now and what I'm doing is I'm kind of swirling it in there to grab product and to grab the glitter especially and I'm going to pop that on over it to give it more of the purple glitter since this one comes with so much more of the pink than the purple I like to use the the pink part first and then go over it with the purple so that the purple part can be the part that gets to be like the star of it. But that way I don't have to waste a ton of the, pur the purple part by layering with it. If that makes sense. And then go back over and blend. So just blend in circular motions to make sure that's good and blend it out. Now through all this blending you might notice that the bottom part of your eye kind of becomes a hot mess and that's exactly why I haven't done my uh, face makeup yet for those of you who wonder. Now to add a little bit more interest to the crease I'm going to take a color like this. This is called Plum Dressing. My big fluffy brush and I'm going to blend that in the crease. And that adds like a nice purpley wine hue to it. Okay, so uh, now that the shadow itself is pretty much done except for the bottom, I'm going to use just a marker style pen liner just to do a really thin strip of black. Nothing major. You could even skip this if you want. 
And then I'm just going to take the, sh the brush that I used to apply the shadow, the purple shadow, and just kind of go over that and kind of blend it out so that it's not an, a real obvious line. So I'm just going to clean that stuff up and then I'll be right back. I'm going to use one of the Physician Formula mascaras. I'm going to use the purple one. It's technically for brown eyes, but whatever. Apply this to the lashes. I think mascara is pretty self-explanatory. I decided to add just a little bit of a lighter color right here in the inner part. So I'm going to take a little bit of that uh, eyeshadow transformer again. And just with a big fluffy brush I've been using for blending, apply just a little bit of that in just this little pocket right there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the pink shadow as well. And just kind of go over that and blend. Get a little tight lining on the bottom. And then drag the pencil out at this outer part here. And then take a small, like, well, this is a little angled brush. And just kind of blend that out. It doesn't have any kind of obvious line. And then also kind of try to pull it up and around to where your shadow is. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect. And then pat over that with the purple part of my dark magic. Not in the waterline since it has glitter and that can be really uncomfortable. And then if you want you can add mascara on the bottom. I'm going to use the purple mascara. Ooh, what happened? Ew. Can you guys see this? It's like all the mascara is all like globbed and blobbed on. Okay, that's different. Not really so sure I like that. You're doing like a really smoky look like this and you don't care if it gets kind of messy and smudgy. What you can do is when you apply your mascara, if you end up getting any smudges, just take a Q-tip and go like this and almost kind of like blend the smudges in. Okay, so now to finish this off, I'm just going to do some lips. I'm going to use uh, NYX's Fuchsia Lip Liner. Okay, and honestly, I think a hot pink lip looks really awesome with this look, but since it came out, I'm going to use Violetta Lipstick. Alright, so that basically concludes my, my Maleficent My Dark Magic look. I don't know really what I'm going to call this video. I think I'm going to have you guys name it for me. So, yeah, if you'd like to be in on the action of naming stuff, follow me on Twitter and Facebook because so, I usually communicate with you guys the most on those. That, I think that's pretty much all I really wanted to say. So have a great day, and until my next video, uh, remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be yourself.